Okay, so public meeting today. Um, what we want to do, I think, is just a quick summary of the um, real life <laughs> annex meeting we had in Finland and a um, new upfreshing refreshment of what we did so far, what happened in the last few days, weeks. Um, our dev guys did some great work and we're currently working on the white paper. Uh, on the programming side, we okay. didn't discuss much. We just went through the pipe and we went through the talk structure, what we had already planned. And we showed everybody uh, from Alex's computer how um, the testing platform works. So whenever we have an update uh, on the development side, everybody can uh, run the update uh, of the app uh, on their own computer if they so wish. Um, we primarily discussed a little bit more on the marketing side and Keith was active on that front. Okay. And what, what have you guys discussed? Uh, well, Keith told us that we need uh, to have a marketing plan that uh, targets our key customer group, which is basically uh, homeowners and up uh, on the on, on the on the scale so we can um, sell the project uh, to somehow mainstream customers and he was working on uh, on that kind of, uh, of uh, marketing plan okay um have, have you well what have you guys discussed and um, was there any um thoughts on how to make some marketing plan for the mainstream um rooftop owner uh, yes uh, we shared basically just general ideas on in the meeting um Your we were talking yeah. about uh, profiling ourselves as mm -hmm. Uh, uh, company or service that is easy to approach and um, for the larger projects uh, somebody who can reliably and practically implement what the customer needs uh, well Keith has a better idea about that he researches media so uh, basically we would need to listen to his opinion about it better but that's that was the uh, the main focus area uh, that he brought it onto the table. Okay, nice hey guys. Hi Nico. And um, we just talked about um, uh, what you guys have discussed on the marketing side um, for um, saying okay, we want to focus on the mainstream. Um, to get in touch with us for their rooftops and things like this. Yeah, uh, mainstream rooftops, real estate companies, uh, if it's bigger project, then uh, we sell to the corporate market. But basically, the point was, uh, Keith's point was that he wanted to profile us as easy to approach as a telecommunication company. Uh, so that people can really just get the handle of what we do and look at us as somebody who is cool but familiar. Like he wanted to develop as a brand. Right, I think that was a really good point and I agree with Keith. Uh, we should, the end user is not going to care most of, most of the time how or by whom the electricity is produced as long as they can get a nice price. And some consumers, of course, are concerned of the origin as well, but most, uh, most customers will just simply like to buy cheap electricity. And I feel like we can provide that uh, for them as well. Okay, um, 
Nico, you worked a lot on the white paper, I think. Um, what, what's the update from here? Did you have time? Um, I, I put in some work. I, I, it's still quite unfinished. I didn't put all the ideas that I, I had in mind because I didn't, I've been busy with other, other stuff. But I've been working on it, yeah. And I think um, the, we, we should start working on the technical side. And also, I think we should focus on the technical and the financial side, the token side, mainly right now. Uh, that's the most important thing. And uh, those kind of like legal aspects and those things we can add later once the, because I, I feel like the regulation is quite unclear yet. And, and you know, we should work on those things that we can absolutely for cer certain we can put down, which is the technicalities. And which is of course, Tom's and Al Alex's spot, which will be great if we can, um, how to say, we should translate the financial model and the treasury model into code um, by um, I, I guess that's the that's the most important thing that we should agree on the how we're going to proceed with this uh, with this meeting uh, so so let's agree how we're going to actually uh, exactly do that so to make this our dream into an actual token by uh, coded by Alex and Tom um, we need to come up with a solution how how we can do that any thoughts on that okay so i totally agree that um especially the regulation side is very unclear thomas and i um talked to the bafin so like the german sec um and they didn't have any clue on um how to regulate an ico they said okay you have to be Client with MIFIR 2, MIFIR, and the alternative investment regulations, but they couldn't tell us how it is if we just promote our project on the internet and don't give any, um, I don't know the word, um, consulting on um, which token would be best, um, hey, let's invest in Annex and things like this. If we still have to be compliant with MIFID or is it just an investment, do we have to also be compliant with all the crowdfunding um, regulations we have in Germany and how these things are. So it's really unclear. And they also said, if you give us all your ID and your um, contract um, to apply for being regulated and being certified as a good regulated coin. We can't guarantee that this will um, last for a year because everything is changing right now. They have at the moment three people working at the token side, at the cryptocurrency side at Bafin. And also the ESMA only has 10 workers for the whole European area of cryptocurrencies. I have a paper here from Bafin, uh, which I have linked to the Telegram, and um, I'm linking it again now here. Uh, it's a PDF where they say that in according to Mythid 2, you have to be compliant with the Wertpapier prospects gesetz and Fair Mögen where Merkens Anlagen gesetzt and uh, then you have to give uh, proof of credit and then you have to be compliant with Markt Missbrauchsverordnung and prove that you are compliant with uh, the EU regulation about the uh, securities so it's it's not really really different really but of course it doesn't say anything in detail it just outlines stuff yeah that, that's like there is no clear re regulation and that's precisely my point and then yeah once we have some guidelines we should try to rather be over compliant than than under so we don't run into any trouble 
like I've, I've mentioned a couple times that maybe we can take a role in helping the regulators to come up with good practices by showing them a way of like reasonable way ways of uh, going about it um, and this brings me to my uh, my other topic that i wanted to discuss which is the incorporation of nx solar which which is also should be on the short list of doing things and once we decide where to incorporate we should get on it so we can we could actually start making contracts and, and getting this uh, pilot project up and running and once we have the token and once we have an actual functioning product and we can we are in the position to hold a hold a sale maybe at that time uh, it's time to worry about the regulation how can we do it le the most legit and then we can approach these regulators to say like you know is this okay and this is our suggestion and probably if it's reasonable i don't think there's any reason to decline that what do you guys think yeah um i also think so um i think me and thomas will um print out the thing get all the paragraphs out of it and look what is written in there in the german kvg kreditwesengesetz and things like this so we know what is coming to us and um, especially the kvg um makes me head edge because um I think somewhere in the KBG is written that you need at least 5 million of eigenkapital. So um, you need to have 5 million euros to start anything um, doing with um, Wertpapier, with stocks and things like this. So uh, all things I get, uh, have to find out and I will think Thomas and me will start working on the regulation side as soon as possible. So we know um, if we can do the token in this way, we thought we will do it to be compliant. Um, not that you guys um, did some awesome technical job. And <laughs> at the end, Thomas and me are coming and saying, hey, the guys, we can't do this like that. And you have another week of work um, to make it compliant with the new thing we found out so i think impossible to read what we have to do but um as you mentioned nico um having concerns on the regulation is really uh, later a thing and um, now we need a minimum viable uh, an mvp so we can get things started yeah, I agree. I think the main concern at this point is the how we're going to handle the dividends part, because that's regulators are going to be interested in that. If we we are flat out offering dividends uh, based on hold, your holdings, so that's a, that's a security out of the gates, like no questions asked, and that's that's what we're trying to do here. So uh, we the idea was to code it into into the the contract, and how is it going to actually be executed? and how we get the uh, holders paid without actually you know breaking any laws or any regulation that's the challenge right now so i think um yeah they all the, they are basically created out of thin air dividends or the token so but of course they have some monetary value if they can be exchanged and so on I don't know but, how the but, regulation. But, but the dividends are not really created from thin air, are they? Because the idea is to have a functioning power plant that is generating profits, which are then channeled to the token holders as profits. So it's not actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But yeah. Okay. So so actually, what we are doing is we are um, distributing sh kind of like uh, shares of this uh, NX network in forms of tokens. And then when the networks provide, uh, produces electricity, which we then sell to uh, end customers who pay us for that uh, service, and then we cover our fees, cover our expenses, and then we are left hopefully what is profit. Mm -hmm. And that profit should then be distributed as dividends. Yeah. But, but I think not the dividends is the problem, but more the price. Um, so whenever you have a price of a stock, an investment or something like this, it's 
it has to be regulated because there is a risk to lose money. There are also investment funds which don't pay out dividends um, and you still have to be compliant and it is still regulated even without dividends. So even if we don't pay out dividends, um, we are still um, a security because it represents a share in our company. And um, yeah, if we don't have any guarantee or something like this, which makes it easier, we um, have to comply with these regulations. And I think that's a thing um, a lot of ICOs don't think about. They still have a price, there's still a risk in investing in them. And even without any dividends, you can be, um, you have to be regulated and comply with the regulations. So it's not only about uh, dividends, we have to be concerned. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. A lot of ICOs think that they can dance their way around of being a security while, you know, providing marginal utility and then actually, um, the, for example, the SEC's firm take on this is that uh, what looks like a security is considered a security and they reserve the right to interpret that case by case which makes total sense and you know it's uh, it is kind of naive to think otherwise so yeah um, but uh, yeah I, I don't see a problem as as long as we all uh, realize that this is what we are doing we are actually selling securities At least providing securities, not selling, but providing securities. Right, providing securities. <laughs> yes. Um, Alexi, is it um, possible to show us the demo of the pipeline? Yes, it is. Wait a second. Oh, that would be fantastic. We can get it on the tape and then it will be on our YouTube. That's, yeah, that's that, really that would good. Be cool. <laughs> Can you see it? Yes. So yes. This is what we nice. basically have right now. Simple demo. Uh, I'm logged in uh, into this D app with my MetaMask. You know, MetaMask probably the browser based wallet. Uh, and what I can now basically do in this demo is uh, request these NX tokens. I can basically now create me new tokens. So now it created me thousand tokens, but they are ERC20 compatible tokens. Basically at the moment I can just create them out of thin air. But but we yeah. could um, have some treasure, um, like we have in our um, image. Uh, what what your cousin did for us, Nico? What is it called again? I I, I lost the word. The treasury. Yeah. Yes. It's the treasury. The the picture on the white yeah. one pager. Yeah. So we could um, get them into the treasury and say, okay, um, every account is able to. Um, request 10, 100 annex tokens because that's the dividend. Yeah, it could oh. be like that. Nice, cool. Then in this demo, I can also stake these tokens. Let's say I want to stake 500 tokens. Again, it asks me to confirm the transaction when it goes to the blockchain. Then we wait something now. Now my balance got uh, minus 500 and now I have staked 500 tokens and my voting weight and dividend ratio have increased. Cool. Um, where are the staked tokens going? Um, are they going to another Ethereum um, address um, which is located at Annex or where are the tokens going and how can you um, unspark your tokens? Will, will there is no unsparking yet, but not right now it's just, um, they are stored in this user structure that 
this you account has this many stake tokens okay so it's on the contract and then they're minus from the actual token amount cool uh, so so correct me if i'm wrong but the the way i understand it, it works is that there's a smart contract that you so-called deposit your stake tokens and the contract keeps track on who who has staked and how much and what their vo uh, voting and dividends ratios yeah. are and yeah. it's basically decentralized since it's in the blockchain right yeah it's oh, really cool at the moment but... yeah it, then... there's nothing like put in detail yet on purpose basically because yeah. we needed actions then there's the ability to vote for a project, which I just was able to create if it works. Okay. Mm. No, it doesn't. Uh, okay, I have to check that, but yeah. So then the same smart contract could work kind of like as a uh, gatekeeper for you to access this voting platform right yeah same the same contract can include whichever components uh, or it can interact with other smart contracts yeah so up to us to decide how we are going to implement it yeah basically you can do anything <laughs> you just have to you can code anything with these tokens on the blockchain. But with great power comes great responsibility yeah. as well. A huge attack yeah. and a lot of things can go wrong, but yeah, definitely cool. Um, cool that we can do basically anything. But yeah, I, I think that, well, I'm not a coder, but I, I feel like, like in the, like writing contracts in general, I know a lot about writing contracts and the, the leaner the contracts, the fewer words, the better usually. Yeah, and more waterproof. I guess I assume the same applies to code. Yeah, and we have to like we have to really make it so that it's secure the contract. Yeah, of course the the stakers and holders funds and their securities are have to be our priority, especially since they are actually representing stake in the actual physical network of Enix. Thank you for that. That's uh, it's really cool. Yeah, really cool. Thank you. Mm, I haven't checked the white paper, but uh, is there anything already about the tokens there? Hold on, let me pull it up. So this is what we have so far. Basically, what I just put here is the you know disclaimers and our license about our vision. We we can uh, these are the things that don't really matter at this point. They they are pretty much clear on the one page already. Um, yeah, you still need to do some work with the incentive incentivization model. You know, put some game theory there and work that out. Um, we, I, there's a section about why we chose Ethereum network. Yeah, I, I put it there. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I want, I was wondering because it didn't look like something I read before. That's cool. But Sweet. It's just some basic, basic stuff about uh, Ethereum. Okay. That's great. That's great. Okay. So we do have something on that. So then uh, I guess the token structure is what we're talking about here. Yeah. So what is, um, yeah, what is the we... token structure? Well, for the MVP, uh, we are making the um, uh, token for investing in the whole thing, the whole project. So we discussed that that could be ERC-20 and that digital contract within the token represents the same, the, the same contract that you guys have made on paper that is compliant with the regulations. 
So the same rules uh, in logic are written in the contract. And now the dividend bearing token um, on top, that is the options that guarantee some kind of extra profit, basically just interact. They take value from uh, this um, first MVP uh, so that people who invest larger amounts or people who invest early on, they can get a little bit extra. That's also a kind of security. And now then there is the non-fungible token that represents the individual um, projects, uh, which means that it's not just money, it also has a name on it, tag on it. Uh, right. So that's right. then to one. And the only difference between that and ERC20 is that it has a few more fields of defining what kind of token it is. So it represents the individual project. So it's, it represents something physical. And now this... Right. Sorry, uh, uh, right now in the demo, the, uh, it's not a token in the demo, the project is just a... Yeah, yeah, that's true. Structure. That, that yeah. comes, actually, that individual project token comes actually the last when we have everything else ready. So I'm a little bit confused right now. Are we talking about two separate tokens here? We're talking about three separate tokens. Three? Uh, okay, then I'm very confused. Okay, first the MVP is the token that we demoed. We need to populate it, this token with the rules of the actual contract for investors. And then number two on the list is the token that uh, is the option token that gives rewards for exceptionally good investors. How we define them is up to us. And then finally, the token that represents the individual projects that we build. Uh, from your perspective, it would mean the individual property. So the standard is a little bit different, ERC721, because it's actually already implemented in the, uh, in the Ethereum's like official release. So uh, it has a few extra fields that define uh, the name of the project and give it some kind of identity. So it's not as fungible as the tokens that are like money. So you, you give each token a name. So it represents something physical. All right, now I think I got it. So essentially we would end up as many different named tokens as there are projects. Yes, yes. All right, I, th I think that might be bad. I would like to avoid that if, if possible. Like, is there like, um, do we really need three different tokens is my question. Because if we have this like our, our MVP, which is essentially an investment platform, so why not just uh, since we are raising money just enough to cover the building cost of the first project and we are only releasing that amount of tokens. Let's say one, like uh, I think probably we pick, some, pick the token value somewhere close to $1. Yeah. That would make sense to most Question. people. That they will instantly Question know. Question about the third token came uh, up uh, after uh, we discussed uh, a rolling uh, investment fund. So people would be able to invest in different types of projects later and the funds would be channeled there. So this is how we could be able to track it or tr track the investments and uh, actually also to automate them. So what? we would be able to give, let's say uh, we have a project in, in Germany, which is a solar power plant. Uh, we can track the value of that individual project and we can actually track the production of that 
individual project and you know go into a little bit more detail it's not 100 percent absolute absolutely necessary but that discussion that topic came up after we discussed that people would be able to um, invest in individual projects through the revolving fund yeah i understand that that makes sense but uh, okay let's uh, let's have a a real life scenario like let's assume that our project is up and running and we we have this uh, one token that is called nx and uh, one, once a project is on, on the stage of mini ICO, which is what we call them currently, each project will have their own mini ICO. You can take part, anybody can take part by depositing um, certain cryptocurrency or fiat or whatever, how, how we structure that probably, probably Ethereum um, on, the, on the smart contract yeah. and then, and then uh, receiving tokens um, in exchange and then gaining owning rights to those uh, projects so they will they will gain a piece of nx network and then later when there's more and more projects instead of investing in like any single project uh, specifically uh, the people are actually just choosing those people uh, those uh, stakers who vote are choosing the best uh, based on game theory hopefully the best projects that will generate the most dividends uh, through profits uh, so it, and they wouldn't necessarily care uh, where the project is located or wh what the project is otherwise as long as it can make money. So, uh, so the whole network would, would uh, comprise of these uh, best possible projects. So, yes, but can we assume that? And uh, how do we track uh, the project's success like outside of the blockchain, like off-chain? We can do that, of course, through uh, um, any centralized project management interface like SAP, for example. We, we can definitely do that. But do we want to do it on-chain or do we want to do it off-chain? And do we want to give the investors liberty to invest, for example, a project in Germany or a project in Namibia? Uh, or will they actually just choose to invest in the whole company and we decide what to do with their money? I think, um, I, I, yeah, go ahead, Neti. I think um, we should provide some projects um, where to invest. And um, so, so, so we as Annex, um, provide some projects but the community could also tell us hey there is um, a project you could build the power plants for and then we provide this things on the pipeline um, but the investment in the token is not only in the um, project but in the whole annex network and you later sorry for my English um, and you later um, profit if you choose the project because the whole annex thing gets more worthy and you get higher dividends because you am um, said because you voted for this project which gives more dividends so you invest in annex and in the project if you vote for it right uh, yeah so so the, the idea is that the we would kind of like incentivize to invest in the NX network, which would make all the tokens fungible because then you wouldn't own any part of the, like if you, if you have project based tokens, they're never going to be fungible because each project is producing differently. But if we are looking at the whole network and uh, we are trying to pick the best projects to make the network stronger and, and more pro productive and people will want to invest in the network and people will want to pick, uh, the best project that will contribute to that end. So then the tokens will actually, um, the, I, I don't think we need more than one token, to be honest. Like if we need another token, we could think about like if, if we want to have some kind of like a cash type of token uh, to use for energy. But I, I, I'm not sure if we can do that with the, probably it's not a good idea to mix uh, security token with like payment tokens. Uh, probably won't make any sense. 
but you know what I mean? Like I, we would have like this uh, kind of like, let's think, think of NX as company that they invest in. And then they will, by staking their tokens, they will get the um, voting rights to steer the direction of the company. And of course we could have like this kind of like a web or application portal that, that will uh, let all the shareholders uh, monitor the, the yields of these uh, individual plans or nodes of the network. And then we could have like, if, if, there's, if, if it seems like uh, one part of the network becomes unprofitable, what, what should we do with that? You know, how, how can we deal with that and put some you know, uh, management pressure there or you know, kill the node or whatever needs to be done, yeah. this kind of thing. But if we are operating, like if we actually, as a company, we own different solar power plants that we can, we can buy and we can sell, uh, uh, it would put us into a position of uh, uh, an energy company. We would be a power seller in the market. Right? Um, yeah, that's a tricky question. The idea, the, the ideal we have is that it will be a decentralized kind of like sharing platform, kind of like a Craigslist for energy, if you will, or an, some kind of an analogy. Like NX would provide a platform for people to um, basically share energy and buy energy using the NX tokens or NX2 tokens, uh, NX cash tokens or whatever. So we wouldn't actually be the ones who sell the energy rather than the network itself would, would um, sell the energy to the clients and then channel the profits uh, 100% to the token holders. So actually NX wouldn't be taking a cut from there. Rather NX would be the catalyst of, that makes all these things happen and connects these uh, individuals who want to invest in the platform and, and uh, contractors who want to build these plants and end users who want to buy cheap electri electricity. Okay, let's imagine that I'm a contractor and I have a plant that I want to build in Kenya, an actual project that I want to do. Uh, and there, the project consists of 1,800 houses and it belongs to a real estate company. And these 1,800 houses uh, all are built with solar panels, battery backup, inverter and grid connection so they can sell power back to the grid as uh, a, a response kind of way okay so the project is ready and the real estate company is the one charging the customers for a service fee and this provides nx token holders profit now who owns the power plant does it belong to the real estate company, the homeowner, local contractor, or NX the company? That's a great question. Um, uh, let me just take this. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I had a good idea about that. No, I think, I think, yeah, that's the question that we need to be asking. Who is the owner? And I think the owner should be the token holder, the token holders. Uh, 100%. So how I imagine it would work is that we would approach these different uh, contracting companies with our idea and and if they want business from us, we would then take their uh, possible plausible projects, put it put them into our pipeline to be voted on and and um, then should they should uh, they become uh, chosen and then we fund those projects, we will pay the contractor to provide us with the equipment, installation, maintenance for, for a set amount of period. We will kind of make a contract with them, um, but the network will end up owning the, um, because each, each token will represent a certain amount of money that we invested in the equipment and their work and their labor. So the contracting company wouldn't own it. The homeowner wouldn't own it. The NX network will alone own all the equipment and all the, all the stuff and, and the NX, net, NX network via the treasury model would then pay for the maintenance of said equipment until the end of life. Okay, and now let's no. imagine that the real estate company actually will agree to this, uh, this arrangement. 
what happens when the project becomes somehow a little bit unprofitable? Will we simply sell it? We are talking about physical infrastructure here. Will we sell it and we possibly cannot shut, shut it down? Can we? Yeah, that's a good whole... question as well. Like we, we could, uh, we could also incorporate in the voting um, to like uh, shut down unprofitable projects and then liquidate those, um, you know, like set, basically means... sell the equipment if, if it's possible. But I, I'm not so sure uh, how that's going to be done in practice. Installations, they can be sold, yes, but it would be very questionable to sell or to uh, take off uh, infrastructure from somebody's proof while they have already signed uh, a two-year or four-year agreement. And well, of course, we can't do that. Like we, we have to work in, in the framework of the contract. If we are, have made a contract to provide them electricity for two years, we have to hold to that. And no matter if we're taking a beating on that or not, it's, uh, again, it's a matter of like risk assessment. And that's why the wider the network, the better, because some better projects will compensate for, for those that uh, are doing, um, doing us harm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so uh, we have to assume that, okay, we as a company, NX Network is, a, is a, an incorporated company and it invests on behalf of the token holders, correct? Um, it, I wouldn't say that either. We rather provide the investing platform and maybe we can give, give a nudge by, um, you know, trying to find, putting our hours in to try to try and find plausible project for the community to vote on. And then basically it would be autonomous, like NX wouldn't be needed uh, in the, in the best case scenario. The community would just pick the, suggest their own project, vote on those and then execute. And then what we would have to do as NX would, would, would be uh, making contracts and do the legwork. Um, for the contractors to connect the actual, like make the actual physical plant happening. Yeah, Everything else could be automated. Yeah, but in whose name? If we have 100,000 individuals as signatories and we have to hope for the loops of everybody having to provide the letter, the, 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 the uh, uh, credit and uh, in having an investor's license and uh, everything. So, of course, we have to have a structure for, for doing that on behalf of, of, of the investors because individual, I mean, Im imagine 10,000 or 100,000 individuals wanting to build a power plant together. It's like, if, it, if they are doing as individuals, they will have to get licensed themselves, don't they? <laughs> I have no idea, but I, I know that it's not being done before. It's never been done before. So this will be a groundbreaking thing if we can manage it. There are cooperatives that operate as companies. They're, they're doing the same thing, but the cooperative has the licenses. They are like an incorporated entity that is doing everything on behalf of the shareholders. So I think in this case, um if a community wants to build uh, power plants on every rooftop but they don't want to go to the local bank and take um, credit from it or you know um, we as annex could help to have a way of um, securely collecting money by um, saying okay we have a project here and um, but we don't have the cash so we need to finance it and they could finance it via annex get some annex tokens and profit from it because um you you you, you don't have a credit and uh you get some dividends from annex yeah i don't know something like this yeah, yeah. i mean by issuing securities uh, we are investing in power plants like what works like a duck, talks like a duck. We definitely we look like a power company. 
Mm. Yeah, that might be it. And it's certainly something to look into. And if that's uh, like a major hurdle that we have to, or we have, if we have to change the direction, then uh, yeah, I think everybody's ready for that. It's just uh, at this point, that's uh, the basic concept that I had in mind. And of course, um, we should look at all possible options, but I feel like this would be the kind of like a next evolution in terms of power generation and distribution. And of course, it's, uh, it's, it should be clear that energy companies are not going to take kindly to, to this kind of a movement that uh, aims to decentralize the power generation and sales and kind of cut the middleman out. That's what we're trying to do here. So the same way as like, you know, online stores didn't take too kindly on Craigslist or, or like, well, maybe not so much Craigslist, but eBay, for example, and, mm. and those kind of marketplaces that kind of take the value out of the market. But I, I don't, I don't see like, I didn't see m many internet stores going belly up after eBay, rather the opposite. So I, I feel like there's plenty of room on the market for yeah. this kind of product as well. It's just that the regulation will be tough. I know that. We can even like be, if, if we are talking about decentralization, if that's like really, really the point, then we can treat individual projects and individual uh, entities in our network as nodes. And as you said, if we are the, the platform, then we can be uh, an institution that is like located above them in the hierarchy. Uh, right. And, and, and like in terms of regulation, I think we, we have to at some point start to create circles in, in different uh, regulatory areas, which we can call like, you know, NX Asia, NX America, whatever, um, based on the regulations. And, and hopefully um, interested individuals will, will uh, sprout up and, and, and take that task and start uh, creating the community there. In, and operating in and working with the regulators there to make it happen. That's the that's the dream anyway here. Because obviously the solar uh, solar and, and power regulations and the financial regulations are very different globally, and we are aiming to be global um, project at some point. Yeah, um, Al Alexi actually wanted to show the the bolting on the demo app. So maybe we can do that now. Yeah, I got it working. All right, I'll give you the screen. Yeah. We got Samoli here watching. Welcome. Hi there. So like you saw the previous demonstration. So again, I can, uh, this is, May, just for the demo, demo purposes, I can create myself these NX tokens. It gives me 1,000 tokens when I request them. As you can see, the balance went up. And then I can take these tokens for the increased voting rate. So let me take like 400 tokens. OK, now we wait. And then you can see. It updates the weight and the balance and the stake tokens. Then if here are a couple of examples projects, again on the blockchain, I can choose to look at them. Like there could be some information there, of course, and how many volts this project has. And now I can vote on this project. So of course it's always go cost some gas to call the blockchain, but now it votes for the project. So it basically, there is not only the idea that you, it gives it amount of votes that I have in the vote weight. So if I put 500 more, it's very basic at the moment. There are no yeah, but I think that's it. That's that's uh, what we need. Basic. That's the idea. Like the, the yeah. more you stake, the more you you can have influence, yeah. and uh, and the more you get rewards. So that's yeah. like as simple as possible. That's great. That's fantastic yeah. work. 
and we can have like on this voting page we can have like a um, our calculations, profitability calculations, so people yeah. can go in depth and uh, really look into it and make an informed choice. Yeah, so now I increased my voting rate. So if I go back and vote again, as you can see, now it gave it even more votes. So, but yeah, that's it basically. Yeah, that's great. And I, I think we have to restrict the amount of votes um, everybody yeah. has, like for a certain time limit or a certain amount of projects yeah. per week or something like that. Depends on, of course, the scale. And that's totally possible. With it. Yeah. And, and I also think, like, obviously, it should be probably like one vote per project. But also, I don't want to necessarily rule out from people voting multiple projects either. Like let's say there's a hundred projects in the in the pipeline, and uh, then you could vote for like ten percent of those. So that would be like ten votes on different projects or something like that. Just an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was that was really good. Yeah. Really cool. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's just a demo, but I think we can make it a real product. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like that's how it starts, and then we we yeah. uh, we polish it, we add some things, and uh, yeah, then there's the regulation, which which is the thing that still worries me the most, in terms of like if we if we are planning still planning for the summer release, which I think is still in the play. But uh, I think we have to get our get our. Um, working shoes on on the on the white paper and as well as uh, agreeing first of all how many tokens and how the token is going to be functioning uh, before we start writing too much so um, i would like your opinion um, on the amount of tokens and w if what i said to you makes sense at all or or should we uh, go another way I don't know what what do you mean the amount of tokens? Um, I mean different different kinds of tokens because there's now now been talk about having like um, three different kinds of tokens. First of all, the investment platform token, which which would be the crowdfunding part, and then there would be this uh, non fungible project specific token, which would allow um, investors to invest in singular projects per, per their uh, choosing. And then there will be this uh, third project that will be used for dividends, if I understood correctly. Yeah, the platform token, based on our uh, previous discussions, the platform token, which is the MVP, then the option token, which gives privileges to certain investors that are good enough according to our um, parameters. and then we discussed that later on when we have people voting for different projects they could choose between individual projects which would be represented by their own individual tokens and there is a token standard precisely made for that purpose I, I I think um, having at, having one token is better or two. Um, I don't think we need a token for every project because um, it a brings more risk to the investor if the project um, isn't that um, good as you thought. This brings risk to us because if you're not ha happy with your investment, you're more, li more likely to go to the regulators and say, hey, I spent my money um, on Annex and lost it or the power plant got bombed or um, something like this. So it's, it's like um, the difference between having one um, stock, one share of a company or an investment fund. Um, 
with with the model of um, multiple um, projects in one token. You as the investor have um, less risk, and we as Annex have less work to do because um, we don't have to do a token for every project. Um, and especially, how would it work to um, sell the token from from every project? Um, we would have to apply on the um, exchange platforms with every single token of every single project if you want to sell it to the free market. Otherwise, you have to sell it to Annex, and we as Annex um, need the money to um, or the amount of Annex to give back some Annex tokens for the project tokens would would make it more um, weird, I think, <laughs> and um, not that easy. Precisely, there would be a second market. Like, for example, if we uh, change uh, the word project into a painting and NX into a museum or a gallery, uh, we are the gallery and it contains many paintings. So people can invest in many paintings inside the gallery. And there's a second market inside us. That was the idea before. Okay, so, so, so like the... Um pipeline site we would have a gallery site let's call it the gallery site um where you stake your annex tokens and invest in different projects yes the the idea that the individual project would be completely within us it would not go in the public exchange it would be completely within our uh, um, internal market that's interesting. So it would so be like painting within our gallery because, it, of course, it even on paper it belongs to us. The the property belongs to us. So. So what you what you're talking about here is that NX would actually be the owner of those plants and be become de facto energy company, and then just uh, provide an opportunity for NX token holders. To invest in those projects, and then in, in, they will they would yeah. get these like different uh, dividend. Uh, uh, excuse me, um, these like uh, equity kind of tokens for each project individually. Yes, and those NX token holders they can be the owners of the NX network also, like through our NX token. So they can, we can be a publicly owned company with publicly owned infrastructure and the meaning of those um, non-fungible tokens would only be to track the investments and yeah i get it yeah um, that's interesting um what but I, what, what, I, what my concern is that are we overcomplicating it without getting much gain? If the tracking is the only thing we have, we get from that, is that going to be uh, good? In, I mean, of course, tracking is good and information is always good and it helps us make better, better decisions. But are there other ways, other ways also to track the performance of, of the plants, for example? Like if we're talking about smart grid that communicates with, uh, with our portal, for example, and gives us out information that is easily accessible, to everybody, wouldn't that void the uh, meaning meaningfulness of of those uh, project specific tokens? So Tom's gone. <laughs> oh, well. I think the idea of creating a token for each project is pretty complicated. Like, yeah, I also think so. Especially for the beginning, we don't need this um, because we have only one, two, three um, projects at the beginning. Yeah, it's an interesting thought. Let's, I mean, we can, we can still, of course, keep it on the table, but at the moment, like you said, MVP is what matters and for MVP, regardless of what we decide to do later, yeah. the side we need to, uh, we're going to pick, uh, it doesn't matter right now. So let's and focus. In a way, on. And in a way they are all already the pro, the projects in this MVP are in a way already tokens if you think about them. They are created on the blockchain where you cannot exchange them, but they are there, they are their entities and you can 
create them and delete them. Yeah, and well, what I like about the whole token thing is that you are able to create a secondary market with those. Of course, the, uh, as, as it is with regulation, no, no exchange is going to list a security token, um, but that might change. And they, they might, they will, there's going to be uh, this year, probably there's a lot of uh, decentralized exchanges. That's going to be a thing. So we can list on those. And I don't, I don't believe there's anything anybody can do to stop the trade of security tokens on decentralized exchanges, which is great. And then that will create a whole new paradigm for investing in power plants because essentially you could decide to um, you know, go, go in, into a, a open a position in NX and own a part of the network. And then you can, could just uh, liquidate part of your um, ownership very easily, very quickly through a decentralized exchange and swap them for another token. Uh, I think that would be great. Unless I'm missing something here and, and, and there's like a glaring hole in my, my logic, but what do you guys think? Are you guys still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> just, uh, I was just looking at the co co code quickly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, of the of the token that is the uh, the like the similar to crypto kittens, which we are the ERC seven twenty one. I was looking at the code and it's just a, not that complicated. Yeah, the infamous crypto kitties that brought the Ethereum network to its knees. Yeah. Because that's the contract we need to use if we want to like create uh, each project into a separate token. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not a big fan of complicated things. I, I yeah, want everything same. lean and neat as possible. I feel like that's the efficient way and use the like the leftover energy for something more productive. And especially when it comes to coding, um, more complicated means more risk um, to be hacked. And when it comes to money, it is helpful if you don't have much yeah. code. That is true. Thank you. Right yeah. now, the Agreed. Cont contract of this NX is like 130 lines of code. So it's pretty small at the moment, but when it gets complicated, there are, of course, a lot of things you have to consider, like you have to audit the contract and everything. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Yeah, there, there was a study <laughs> where the, um, in Germany, where they had 500 um, uh, grown up men, um, <laughs> I don't know what, what's the word in English, um, and all they had to do was to first write down um, five um to copy five sides of written things and then 10 sides and then 15 sides and the more sides they wrote down the more um failure um mistakes were in in the sides um also although it only was german and um yeah you you still have this mistakes in the code um, when you write more code. So my English is so <laughs> miserable. No, no, stop apologizing, <laughs> but you're, you're getting understood perfectly. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so, so you guys um, also mean for the beginning, one token would be enough. If there is demand for more tokens, we can add them later. Yeah, I think so. Yep, agreed. So I think for the time being, we we would focus on just um, ironing ironing out the the code that Alexi has has written and incorporating only the core features, which would disclude, in my opinion, staking at the moment and voting, and let's keep those uh, for development for future. That I, I think at the moment. If we can 
launch uh, reliable con uh, reliable token um, that allows us to distribute dividends based on profits that would be great um, do you think we can do that alexi yeah yeah it's possible but uh, uh, is it like the dividends how how do they function is like new tokens created for the dividends or how do we transfer the actual dividends into the next token i think what we would need to do is is create like the treasury model like this this is the hub that connects everything and we haven't really settled on the treasury model i think i imagine how it would work is that um the profits all go to the treasury and then from the treasury, we, we have the option to reinvest those funds in new projects or pay dividends and, and, and or pay, uh, of course, expenses. So the treasury will take care of uh, distributing to, uh, the, the funds that come in as profits. And of course, if we're making profits, then there's, there needs to be a way to uh, transfer that because the profits will be likely in fiat. So there will have yeah. to be some kind of a channel to actually convert the fiat into NX tokens that could be then distributed. So there, there should probably be some kind of a um, way to do that. That's, that's uh, completely um, open at this moment. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? I'm thinking like, it's easy to like create new tokens inside the contract. Like if we get dividends, then we have a price for the NX token, then we can create new tokens and distribute them as dividends. Yeah, I think it will have to be some kind of an oracle that gives the yeah. price of the day because the NX token price, obviously after the first release, it will go on its own way. And we, we won't be able to control that. We don't want to control that. And the only yeah. thing that will set some kind of a base value will be the value of the whole network and the equipment. So yeah. then uh, the dividends would have to be uh, like, there, maybe there should be another kind of contract maybe that would issue talk, new tokens on the day value when, when the profits are uh, channeled into the contract. Yeah. So then new tokens will be created on the day value and then immediately distributed yeah. or maybe more, maybe a channel to the treasury first. I don't know. That's something to think about. Yeah. I haven't looked into Oracle's Oracle coding yet, but I know it's possible to uh, get like external information to the contract. Right. The, my Oracle. understanding, I, I have no idea how it works in practice, but my understanding is that we could have like data from like, let's say, three uh, trusted uh, big uh, exchanges, for example, or create, create our own like a, yeah. kind of like a trusted source of the NX price and then use that as an Oracle. Yeah, that's but but this, this, this might be a thing that though, that we might have to push further that we can't solve by the MVP because the MVP yeah. could, could be just a simple crowdfunding platform without dividends at this point. Like, of course, it would be super nice if we could uh, start paying dividends right out of the gates. But then again, aren't we trying to get in the early investors who believe in the idea and are in it for the long haul and are waiting for these new updates to come? And to, to that end, I think it could be a little bit unrealistic to incorporate the dividends at this time schedule. What do you guys think? Yeah, and, if, and if it needs to be on the exchanges, the token, then it needs to be first on the exchanges to get the All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one thing. Like, it's, it's not an easy task to, like I said, a security token, nobody's listing them at the moment. So our only bet would be the decentralized exchanges, which nobody knows what's going to happen there. So, yeah, that's a good point. So um, are we in an agreement that 
that MVP should maybe not include dividends at this moment? Yeah. The, the, the don't consider this as a uh, decision making point because it's not because we don't we don't have nearly uh, enough core members here to even even have a consensus but I'm just asking your opinion I, I think we should include the option to pay but um, not pay this fast um, the dividends because we make the first the pre ICO the first mini token sale um, for expenses and the first um, project so I don't know how fast we make project uh, profit we can do uh, we can pay dividends from uh, yeah so I think maybe the option inside the token so if that technical guys um, see okay they can pay dividends but don't huddle in paying dividends. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. I think the time the schedule is either we push the whole launch until the end of the year or maybe next year, or we do an MVP without the dividends, which I think we can do uh, even for the summer. And if we want, we could have some kind of a reward pro uh, program for early investors. Um, to encourage people to get in early and then uh, we could uh, we could have like a, a side pro program to generate a little bit extra tokens for them something like that to uh, if 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 you um, if we if it's felt that this is necessary but I, I personally i don't think it is necessary i think we have a great idea and i think we won't have a trouble we won't have a problem to fill the first first couple projects that uh, the first uh, Many ICOs, I think that will happen either way. Just that we don't want to um, sell, well, I mean, uh, provide a product that doesn't have full and working capabilities and functionality. And, and uh, we don't want to have there to be any bugs. So, as simple as possible, I guess, is, is here the way to go. Yeah, for the MVP, we really have to be as simple as possible, but we need an early investor reward or something like this i i think at least we need it um for sure there will be um people who are confident okay this is a good good project but um i think it is game theory if you put your money into nx now and don't get any reward you could have also spend the money on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and if the prices go up, you would make something there or even put it in the bank and get 0.5% interest and um, profit from this. So we would need some um, early investor reward or anything. Yeah, that's a valid point. Uh, yeah, that's true. We, we, could, uh, we could probably, I mean, the way I saw it from from the demo that Alexi provided, that we could maybe incorporate staking because it didn't seem like it's so so hard. So what we could do is provide an option to lock up the early investor tokens for a longer period, and then uh, based on that, uh, we could distribute the reward once we actually start generating profits. So so we could have this kind of a program. What do you guys think? Alex, any thoughts? No, oh, I was on mute. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's totally possible to create like a time walk for the staking. Is it possible to say, okay, um, if token staked and in time from the first June to um, 31st um, August and um, you get an extra dividend of X percent at the first dividends or you get the right to um, collect more dividends at the first 
part take? Uh, is it technical possible or a huge? Um, Everything's possible, but uh, it's got. I, I mean, it's it needs to be coded. It make it a bit complicated, but yeah, it's possible. Here's an idea. We're talking about the elevated dividends pro percentage later at, at a later stage, and we are going. We are planning to incorporate this information in the white paper. What I was thinking, we could have for each section. We could have in the white paper. We could have the MVP section, which will be launched uh, at first, and then we could have this uh, um, down the line section, which is going to be incorporated later. And to that end, we we could. Um, have this early investor program where you can actually get uh, even higher maximum um, staking reward. Like let's say that the, our normal maximum dividends percentage would be like 100% extra. So you would get double dividends. But for early investors and so-called like a founder reward, we could up it to 300%. And that's something that would never be taken away from you. You could get, you could get that uh, larger dividends as long as you stake. And then if you, if you decide to fizzle down after that, then, uh, then you would lose it, which would incentivize the early investors to hold even longer. Like we're talking passive income, which is, uh, seems like looking at all the master node pro uh, people are, and, and the projects are adopting master nodes because uh, what people are looking for now and in the future even more so is basic income and, and like a passive income rather than basic income. So uh, that's something to consider. Yeah, that's cool. That sounds really cool. Um, which, which also would give the people who are believing in the project, and I think especially these people would be the early investors, um, because we don't want to hype the project to the moon. Um, that would give them even more chance and even... Uh, bigger um thing yeah like again um game theory all all the way like there's a risk and reward ratio so giving a higher percentage of like 300 percent dividends maybe it's enough of a reward for people to actually pay the opportunity cost and locking their tokens in nx rather than you know going bitcoin or something else uh, in speculation wise so we we need to consider that and and come up with a number that would be the correct correct uh, number to uh, to tip the scales in our favor. What do you think, Alex? Is there um, is it a hard task to somehow uh, code this kind of like I, I wouldn't say a master node, but maybe kind of like a founder status on the blockchain so that um, your wallet would always have the founder status and you would kind of like have a Maybe maybe you would always have an elevated voting rights, and yeah. then if, if you fizzle down, then um, you would lose your your dividends percentage. But then you could build back up uh, to your maximum cap. So so maybe the founder would always have a higher cap to go back yeah. to. Yeah, it's possible if you like invest in the ICO in the like in the first phase, you could get this founder status added to your address. Right, because people are looking for status, people are looking for this kind of, uh, you know, things. And they, they want to, like, if it, if it blows up, if it, if it becomes a big thing, then people are super happy to, you know, have that founder status. And especially since it's uh, limited and scarce, they won't, will never be issued any more founder statuses. So yeah. it's something that people would really like to have.